So, <clears throat> good evening, everyone. The day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence. Well, rightly said by Nikola Tesla, it is this science that allows every one of us to never stop questioning, be it as simple as the invention of fire or be it queries related to black holes. Science is in a true sense a real infinity, that is, it has no ends, no boundaries. So it is this particular thought on which AICHE and IT Rorkela has embarked upon and through its regular K-12 sessions tries to give insights on various STEM topics to the next generation of plethoric science enthusiasts like you all. Another day, another session, but the excitement level is all the same. Having said this, we welcome you all, bright students and teachers, to this wonderful initiative of ours termed the K-12 Expo, a three-day long science heist for the sharp schooling minds. In today's session, our topic of study is James Webb Space Tele Telescope and the space theories related to it. This is intended for the class participation uh, from 11 and 12. Lots of things lined up for you all, but first let's welcome our guest teacher, Mr. Lalit Mohan Sausa from Kendra Vidyalaya Sector 6, Rorkela. <coughs> so, we hope that you will attend this session as well and provide us with your valuable insights towards the end. Great to have you on board. For today's session, we have with us Harish, Swapnil and Parth as our hosts. They will accompany you all on this insightful journey. So, buckle up. Over to you guys. Thank you. Okay. All right, then let's begin. Greetings to the respected teacher and all the fellow delegates. I welcome you all in this K-12 session having the topic GEMS Web Space Telescope. So guys, if I ask a small question that what is the most fascinating topics in the youths in today's date? What is the most curious question that everybody wants to know about? So the simple answer is the space. It is the topic in which everybody wants to learn more and more things because whatever you learn is always the less. So today we are we are with this topic GEMS Web Telescope. We'll also discuss some space theories regarding it, but in our limelight we'll have GEMS Web Space Telescope. So now before starting, I would like to enlighten you all with a quote. The quote is, I know nothing with any creativity, but the sight of stars make me dream. So guys, this is all about the space, means whatever you want to know, you'll, you'll have to research about it and you'll have to learn a lot and lot things about it. So guys, now let's continue with this session. So firstly, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Parth Shah. I'm Sapnil Mohanty. And I'm Harish Siddharth. And we are the host for today's evening. We are going to entertain you till end with a lot of enthusiasm and hope you'll enjoy it. The session will be very interactive and innovative for you guys. And definitely you'll go to you'll definitely learn something from today. OK, so now, as you know, guys, that uh, we have to learn about space. So the most important scientific device that helps us to learn is telescope. Uh, the telescope is a device if we have that in our hand so we can stare the, we can stare at the sky for complete night so today we are going to discuss a lot about it so let's have a video to learn about it But I guess the audio is not audible. Just a minute. Stop the screen share and share again with the audio. Okay, I'm doing that. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Uh, we'll take just a minute for this. Yeah, just a minute.
but it's still not audible. You have to share using that computer audio thing. Okay. When you click on the share content thing, there you will get a button at the top. It will it will tell share with computer audio. Okay. Décollage. Launched by an Ariana 5 rocket from the Kourou Space Center in French Guyana, the James Webb Space Telescope was designed to answer major questions in astrophysics, such as the formation of planets and exoplanets the first galaxies in the universe and their first stars, as well as the composition of the atmospheres of extrasolar planets. During the journey, the deployment of the 6.6 meter primary mirror is a delicate and unique operation. Its huge five layered sun shield, the size of a tennis court, allows the telescope to cool down to around 50 Kelvin. After a cruise of 30 days, Webb reaches its orbit around the L2 Lagrange point, 1,500,000 kilometers away from the Earth. This is a stable and cold environment, which are the necessary conditions to observe infrared radiation with unprecedented sensitivity. Webb is equipped with a series of four instruments located behind the primary mirror. The MIRI instrument is composed of a camera and an integral field spectrometer, both observing in the mid-infrared between 5 and 28 microns. The optical system of the camera, designed by the French team, is made of five mirrors and a filter wheel which selects the infrared radiation. The images are formed on a detector cooled down to a temperature of 7 Kelvin or minus 266 oh, yeah. degrees Celsius. The study of exoplanet atmospheres Planets orbiting other stars than the Sun is one of the major objectives of MIRI. For that purpose, it uses two different observing techniques. The first is a new technical innovation called phase mask coronography. The coronagraphs of MIRI consist of a mask located at the entrance of the instrument and a diaphragm placed in the filter wheel. The objective is to attenuate the light of the central star to observe the very weak signal emitted by an exoplanet, similar to the principle of a solar eclipse. MIRI will be the first instrument in space to implement this type of coronagraph. This technique allows us to observe young and warm giant planets orbiting at several astronomical units from their star. The second technique is the infrared spectroscopy, observing the transits of planets with short orbital periods. With this technique, MIRI can record the light from the star filtered by the planet's atmosphere as it passes in front of the star, or the light emitted by the planet itself before it eclipses behind the star. The obtained spectra contain valuable information on the planet's effective temperature, the molecular composition, and the presence of clouds. While gas giant exoplanets will be the primary targets of MIRI, it will also be possible to detect small rocky planets with this technique. Thanks to the capabilities of MIRI and the Webb telescope, researchers will be able to better understand the formation of exoplanetary systems, as well as the physical and chemical characteristics of their atmosphere and perhaps even begin to study the conditions of habitability on these worlds far from our solar system. Okay guys, so you must be very excited after seeing this video and you must be, the topic is that exciting. And as we discussed before that this is about class 12th and 11th. So we are going to discuss about construction, working principle and the way how this telescope is designed to discover the new things. So now start now starting with the introduction. This James Webb Space Telescope is designed as a successor of Hubble Space Telescope. This telescope was launched on December 25th in 2021 uh, from the Coro French Guiana and 
uh, now coming to the part of the construction and design of this telescope it has a mirror which is 6.5 meters in diameter which is around seven times more larger than a uh, hubble space telescope and this uh, james space web telescope james web space telescope is designed to orbit the sun in a lazarus pattern around the l2 point which is second lagrangian point which is around 1.5 million kilometers away from our planet now to discuss more about this i would like to hand over to one of my co-host swapnil so hello everyone now we are going to discuss about a new set of eyes as we know human beings can only see a small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum to explore seemingly hidden regions of the space we need to see beyond what our eyes can now to understand this topic we just need to move to the class 12 physics chapter of ncert named em waves there we know that frequency is inversely proportional to wave length so as the wave length increases the frequency decreases and that in turn increases the penetrative power now to understand that we can take the example of radio waves where a large amount of wavelength equals a large amount of penetrative power and that enables us the communication by passing through a lot of stones bricks monuments etc now james webb provides us with a new set of eyes as it can see objects in the near infrared and the far infrared regions utilizing the extraordinary penetrating abilities of infrared rays the james webb can capture high quality images of celestial objects hidden beneath the intergalactic clouds and can also detect the faintest signals from the first born stars and the galaxies of our universe so now after discussing this topic we are moving next to the comparison with the hubble telescope so the james webb will observe primarily in the infrared with some capabilities in the visible and will have four science instruments to capture images and spectra of astronomical objects these instruments will provide wavelength coverage from 0.6 to 28 micrometers as a comparison hubble can observe a small portion of the infrared spectrum from 0.8 to 2.5 microns but its primary capabilities are in the ultraviolet and visible parts of the spectrum from 0.1 to 0.8 microns stars and planets that are just forming life behind the cocoons of dust that absorb visible light however the infrared light emitted by these regions can penetrate this dusty sort and reveal what is there inside so here as you can see at the left there is a visible night images from the hubble space telescope formed a star forming region a jet of material from a newly forming star is visible in one of the pillars just above the corner of the right hand image several galaxies are seen in the infrared view much more distant than the columns of dust and gas now it's over to my next co-host for to explain the next slide why are you muted Art, you are on mute. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so now coming to the most striking part of this telescope means what has made this telescope James Webb Space Telescope. So this telescope has a gold-coated beryllium mirror, which are the striking part. Which are the striking part of this telescope? Now, why we have selected beryllium and gold? So now we have the speciality of beryllium that it is very light. It is even lighter than glass. so it is perfectly well for low temperatures means it will not shrink in the low temperature also so we have selected beryllium this telescope has 18 hexagonal mirrors with a diameter of 6.5 meter now coming to the part of gold gold is used because it is a excellent reflector of infrared rays and being an inert material gold will not tarnish tarnish the coating of gold on the mirror is very thin which is around 0.1 meters in thickness and the entire coating of gold weighs around 48.2 grams which is very less and it covers an area of 25 meter square which is 5.5 times larger than the hubble space telescope
Now let's have a look on this video. So, hello guys, uh, as I hope you have enjoyed the video. Now, I request Parth Bhaiya to open slide number six to understand what is the red shift. So, now to understand red shift, we all know that uh, since when the ambulance is passing by from our house, we see that the pitch is really low, really high. But after the ambulance has passed by, we see that the pitch of the sound is really low. Now, to understand this, we need to understand the Doppler effect, which is exhibited by this type of lights. For very distant galaxies, the effect of the curved space-time and the receding motion of the galaxy causes the wavelengths of light to be increasingly red shifted as the distance to Earth increases. We denote the extent of red shift using a factor Z, which is the ratio of change in wavelength to the original wavelength. JWST can measure up to Z equals to 20. Now I it's over to my next co-host to proceed. So hey everyone. Now let's see how the James Webb keeps itself cool. First of all, why should it keep itself cool? The James Webb telescope will observe primarily the infrared light from the faint and very distant objects. So what is the source of infrared light? It's heat. So in order to be able to detect those faint heat signals, the telescope itself must be kept extremely cold. To protect the telescope from external sources of light and heat, like sun, earth, moon, and well, the functioning telescope itself, the web has a five-layer, almost tennis coat size sun shield that protects it from the radiation. The sun shield will allow the telescope to cool down to a temperature of 50 Kelvin by passively radiating its heat into space. The near infrared instruments such as NIRCAM, NIRSPEC, and NIRIS will work at about 39 Kelvin. This is also done to the passive cooling system. But the mid infrared instrument will require a functioning temperature of about 7 Kelvin. This is achieved by using a liquid helium powered refrigerator and a specifically designed cryo cooler. So, you might ask, why five layers? The each successive layer in the James Webb is designed in such a way that it is cooler than the preceding one. The heat radiates out from the layers between them, and the vacuum between the layers acts as an excellent insulator. One big thick sun shield would construct the heat from the bottom to the top, more than five layers separated by vacuum. The sun shield is made up of a lightweight and special plastic called Kapton, which has an extremely well solar radiation resistance. It is also coated with aluminum to make it reflective. The hot side also has a silicon coating since silicon has a high reflectance value. Doping the silicon also makes the shield electrically conducting so that the rest of the JWST membranes can be grounded to it. 
So let's talk about the cryo cooler here. Being an exquisitely sensitive infrared telescope, the James Webb optics and scientific instruments need to be extremely cold in order to suppress the infrared background radiation. That is called noise. Typically, the longer the wavelength of infrared light, the colder the detector needs to be in order to do this conversion, while also limiting the generation of no random noise electrons. James Webb implements both passive and active cooling to achieve this required temperatures using a highly sophisticated liquid helium powered cryo cooler and a very novel technique known as thermoacoustics. Oh, so I guess guys, this was all about construction of this wonderful telescope. And now we'll discuss about its principle and how it is there in the universe. So just buckle up guys. It's now we are coming to the more exciting part of our session. So now let's discuss about the advanced optics. Now, Advanced optics is a technology used to improve the performance of optical systems by reducing the effect of incoming wavefront distortions by deforming a mirror in order to compensate for the distortion. Now, to understand this, we know that in the space, a lot of impurities, objects, etc., are present, which can cause the diffused reflection and refraction of all the rays. So, the JWST uses advanced optics to remove distortions caused by galactic clouds and celestial bodies on the incoming light from far away galaxies and exoplanets. The individual mirror segments are provided with actuators that can move from each mirror precisely in the order of nanometers to achieve this fit. It also allows for focal length correction to produce a crisp and clear image well, next to my co-host. Now, as we have discussed about the principle, we have finally reached to the second Lagrange point, that is L2 point. So to learn about it in details, let, let's dive in. So Swapnil, since this is a three-body system, how will we keep the telescope in place? Won't there be any problems? Hey Harris, this was a really good question. So. Now to understand this situation, we first of all need to know what are L2 points. Lagrange points are positioned in space where objects sent their tend to stay put. At Lagrange points, the gravitational pull of two large masses precisely equals the centripetal force required for a small object to move with them. So as we know that the from the centripetal force of force is coming, that is m r omega square, and also from the universal gravitation of force is coming. The JWST will be sent to the L2 point because at the L2 point, it would be least affected by the radiation of the sun and would also consume extremely less fuel along with being geosynchronous and heliocentric. There are in total five Lagrange points. As we can see from this GIF, that the sun earth l2 point lies 1.5 million kilometers from earth so moving on next hey harris we have seen all about the web but how far will the web see so uh, that's a very interesting question since it takes time for light to travel the farther we look into space the deeper we look back into time confusing isn't it let's understand with an example so let us assume billions of years ago, a stellar event happened, like two neutron stars colliding. There would definitely be photons released from that event. Those photons were traveling all these billions of years without getting interrupted by anything. The main focus of the web is to capture those photons and picture as a very clear image of what happened in the past. Sounds like time travel, isn't it? Well, technically, in a sense, it is. JWST, being an IR telescope, can look back up to 13.6 billion years back in time revealing some of very important events such as formation of galaxies, stars, and even galactic cloud, galactic cloud formations. Okay, guys. So this was our complete presentation on Zeb's Web Space Telescope. Thank you for listening us so patiently. And as you all know that our K-12 committee always comes up with something innovative, something creative, so that you can learn many more things. So stay tuned with us. You guys can scan this uh, QR code so that you can follow us our Insta page and you will be updated for all our further programs.
Okay, so <laughs> thanks a lot, Parth, Swapnil, and Harish for this wonderful journey. Uh, it was really in- interesting to know uh, more about this telescope and all. So that was really fun for us, and I hope every participant uh, who had joined in also liked it. So now we have Lalit sir with us. Uh, uh, he would be addressing you for just a minute. Uh, yeah, we have with us uh, Lalit sir. Uh, we would be addressing you guys. It's about Lalit sir. Uh, adding to his proficiency, he is now presently taking care of Kendra Vidyalaya Sector Six as the acting principal, and we are really proud of him. So the screen is all yours. I think he's facing some internet issues, I guess. He's just texted me about that. OK, we'll get back to him soon. Uh, so like now let's do one thing. Let's take a picture. So uh, those who are comfortable enough to switch on the cameras, kindly do so. We'll be taking this picture and we'll be posting it on our Instagram handles as well. And uh, yeah, like those are comfortable enough they can turn on the cameras we'll be clicking a picture yeah uh, thank you siddharth thank you bejaini thank you swayam thank you himanshu jagadish i would like that every one of you turn turn on their video that would be really nice giving you half a minute time to turn on your videos. Yeah, get yourself settled. That's great, great. Say cheese. With every click I am being I'm being joined with someone else, like someone else is also turning on their video. So. Yeah, uh, now. Yeah, uh, we're done with the videos. Uh, if you want to, you can turn on your video, turn off your videos. Yeah, like uh, guys, we have now opened the session for your question and answers you can go ahead <laughs> go ahead and ask your doubts or raise your hands we'll call you one by one bijani yeah bijani like you can unmute yourself and ask the question um, I want to ask about that uh, layers uh, of uh, cooling system like that layers uh, uh, five. We are using that uh, five layers of cooling system. So every layer is made up of same material. So in the end, uh, how does that cool up everything? OK, uh, the presenters you'd like to answer. So yes, uh, that's actually a really good question. Uh, so not every layer is identical. So the bottom two or three layers are alone coated with silicon, but all of the layers are fundamentally made from Kapton. So the aluminum coating that I've explained about, so let's take like this. Heat is a form of radiation, right? So it uh, almost travels in the form of rays. So what happens is the uh, telescope pushes the heat out and the radiation basically bounces off in between layers. 
also vacuum being a very good insulator like it is almost the perfect insulator we can get it almost dissipates all the heat the, so that's how it uh, keeps itself cool i think that answers you okay. divyanj yeah okay we'll take up the I next have question. another one question go ahead like uh, if a, uh, any celestial object hits the telescope so how could it repair itself yeah that is actually it a really good something. question it can't, it can't actually so how they design how they designed it is so they made it into segments so that a small tear in the shield won't damage the entire telescope so the damage will be arrested to a particular area so that the remaining of the uh, remaining telescope can function properly and uh, if in case anything major happens and uh, the telescope uh, could not perform its work properly then uh, what is the possible measure measure which can be taken so one thing is we can actually send astronauts to the telescope and repair it currently with our technology that is not possible and it's highly risky so the best alternative would be to actually produce another telescope and actually send it there we don't have many options 1.5 million kilometers from our earth um so why you, uh, they have not used some technologies which are used in the um, satellite which is sent to mars by india like they used some other technologies and all which could repair itself yeah it is so the the thing is the rovers that are sent on mars some of them were designed to actually to repair themselves using materials from mars or they would have already preloaded it into the rovers so that they can repair themselves but since this is a telescope and we need it extremely cold as we explained in the seminar the telescope needs to be extremely cold so any repair work that is being undergone that would produce a tremendous amount of heat that would actually totally ruin uh, the telescope's functioning so it is basically a one time telescope you send it it works till it runs out of uh, his, its life and that's it hello vijayani yes am i audible uh, okay i am priyanshu from second year chemical in antiro okay. club okay so the answer to your question is that basically what happens is we cannot repair at this particular moment so nasa even calls it a dollar 10 billion gamble so the thing is that uh, basically where it is kept like the l2 point so there is very little chances of tear and wear because that point is like to be speaking it's completely blank of per se so as per physical damage there is nothing as such and if you if you are considering like some optical damage or something so let me tell you that each of the mirrors can be individually controlled so basically if one mirror like malfunctions you can adjust the other mirror such a way that the focal length again restores it to its original position so that's how sophisticated the instrument is so yes something may go wrong and surely nasa may have some techniques to uh, cover up that but as for now it's like a gamble thank you i hope they answered your questions well vijayani anyone else uh, who wants to take up for the questions part like if anyone has any query you can unmute and ask you can even raise your hand Amisha uh okay uh, you can unmute yourself amisha uh yeah hello uh, my query is that uh, in the last slide it was said that the electrons which are undeviated by any obstruction they can be used to see the birth of clouds and nebula and all the galaxies like may know how like because there are so many undeviated things but we are how what is the technology that 
we can see how we can be able to see that it is not undeviated. So how can we just see the past with that? Yeah, any of the presenters? Uh, Harish, you'll have to unmute yourself. Yeah, so first of all, those aren't electrons, those are photons. So you can understand like, how do we see things actually? So light bounces off something, gets undeviated, and it basically falls in our eye, and our eye captures an image. That's how our eye works, right? That's how a camera works. So it is almost a similar thing. So imagine uh, taking a photo with a lag of 13.5 billion years or something. That is how basically it's like picture the image. To picture that image, those photons have been traveling for so many years and we are finally capturing it. I'm making it into a picture. Okay. I guess this Thank was a satisfactory answer for you, Amisha. Anyone else? Okay, just a minute uh, before anyone else asks a question. Okay, Lalit sir is back with us. Uh, so I welcome him again. And uh, uh, adding to his proficiency, as I already told, he is now presently taking care of Kendra Vidyala Sector 6 as the acting principal. And we are really proud of him uh, and his endeavors. Sir, we would like uh, you to kindly address our students. A brief address, please. Thank you, sir. So, uh, you are muted, I guess. Uh, Uh, hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. I think so. It's facing some internet issues it's here, but it's okay. It's okay. So, okay. Uh, are there any more queries? Uh, participants, uh, if there is any more query, you can raise your hands. Okay. Uh, okay, So, okay. So, uh, <laughs> telling about the next thing that we have in our plans uh, on 30th, there will be a quiz, uh, a STEM quiz, and STEM stands for Science, Technology engineering and mathematics. So it will be a quiz based on these topics and <coughs> uh, like the <coughs> uh, pattern will be that in the meet you will be seeing the questions and will <coughs> will be giving you chances to raise hands and we'll be seeing that the numbering of the raising hands like whosoever does the fastest he will get the chance to answer. And uh, those who give the correct answers, they have certificates to win as well. So 30th, most probably at 5.30 p.m., we'll be having this quiz uh, from class 9 to 12, like the 9 to 12 is a group. So please don't leave th that WhatsApp group that you are part of. Uh, we will be sending the link there. And yeah, uh, uh, thank you all for joining us, joining in this webinar today and we really hope that <coughs> you know, we look forward that you uh, participate in these webinars in, in the future times as well looking forward to it and uh, yeah like keep learning uh, stay safe and yeah that's we a wrap I guess. guys